The modern day Champions League began in the 1992-93 season, but it would take Celtic several years to join the party. The Hoops won the Scottish League title in 1998 to enter the qualifying stages of the following season, but a frustrating summer saw no new arrivals by the time Irish champion St Pat's Athletic arrived for the first leg of a qualifier in Glasgow. The first leg was goalless, but Dr Joe Vengloss' men would win 2-0 in Dublin courtesy of goals from Harold Bratback and Henrik Larsson. But Celtic would go on to be eliminated before the group stage by Croatia Zagreb. Leading 1-0 after a Darren Jackson goal in the first leg of Parkhead, Celtic collapsed in Eastern Europe to a humbling 3-0 defeat. It would take another three years before Celtic participated in Champions League qualification, but Martin O'Neill sparked a revival at the club when he arrived in June 2000, claiming a domestic treble in his first season. His side would face only one qualifier to try and reach the group stage of the competition for the first time, but the draw was as difficult as it could have been, pitting Celtic against Dutch giants Ajax. Celtic went into the first leg in Amsterdam on the 8th of August 2001 as massive underdogs. The Ajax squad at the time had the likes of Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Rafael van der Vaart in their ranks and would go on to win the Dutch Domestic League by 5 points that season. But Martin O'Neill's side delivered a sensational performance, winning 3-1 on the night with goals from Bobby Petta, Didier Agath and Chris Sutton. There was still work to be done a fortnight later at Parkhead, and though Ajax won 1-0 on the night, it was Celtic who progressed 3-2 in aggregate, finally reaching the group stage of the Champions League for the first time. The hoops were drawn in Group E alongside Porto, Rosenberg and Juventus. The Juventus squad of 2001 were truly a sight to behold. An all-star cast containing the likes of Gianluigi Buffon, Alessandro Del Piero, Pavel Nedved, David Trezeguet and Edgar Davids. Celtic's debut game in the group stage was supposed to be at Celtic Park on September 11th against Rosenberg, but was postponed due to the events in New York, so instead it came in Turin against that elite Juventus side. Juve were strong favourites, and a David Trezeguet double either side of half-time put them 2-0 up and firmly in control, but Celtic fought back. A free kick from Stylian Petrov got Celtic back in the game, and when Edgar Davids got sent off with 15 minutes to go, Martin O'Neill's side had the Italians pinned back. With 5 minutes to go, Henrik Larsson was brought down in the box, and the Swede coolly converted the penalty to unexpectedly draw Celtic back level. However, deep into injury time, Juventus' Italian striker Nicola Amoruso dived when up against Jusval Horn, and German referee Helmut Krug pointed to the spot. Amoruso scored the penalty himself to claim all three points for Juventus. Celtic manager Martin O'Neill uncharacteristically fumed in his post-match interview about the penalty, stating that he was disgusted and that his side had been robbed. UEFA decided the rant from O'Neill meant he would be banished to the stand a week later for Celtic's first ever home Champions League group game against Porto. 25th of September 2001 was the date then that the Champions League proper finally arrived at Parkhead. O'Neill looked on as the side put on an assured performance to beat a Porto side containing the likes of Deco, Ricardo Carvalho and Nuno Capucho 1-0, courtesy of a 36th minute goal from Henrik Larsson. Things got even better a fortnight later when Celtic recorded back-to-back -back wins with a 1-0 win over Norwegian champions Rosenborg. Englishman Alan Thompson provided the only goal of the night early on in the 8th minute with a free kick. And with Juventus only managing a 1-1 draw with Rosenberg and a goalless draw with Porto since the opening game, Celtic were top of the group at the halfway point. Acclaimed Glasgow-born artist Alistair Gray created a memorable sketch for the cover of that week's Celtic View, and with Celtic recording a 2-0 win at Ibrox in between those two Champions League victories, life was great for the fans at Celtic Park at this time. Things came crashing down slightly a week later, courtesy of a disappointing 3-0 defeat away to Porto. Celtic weren't at the races for the entire game, and had gone 1-0 down in the first minute, never to recover. Things got worse a week later in Norway. Martin O'Neill's side lost 2-0 to Rosenberg on the 23rd of October 2001. Celtic had sealed their 1998 league championship on the final day of the season with a 2-0 win over St Johnson. The goal is coming from Henrik Larsson and the often maligned Norwegian striker Harald Bratback. Bratback had since returned to Rosenberg and it was he who scored both goals against his old club on this night. Heading into the final round of fixtures, Juventus had sealed their place in the next round with 11 points from 5 games. The second qualifying spot was still up for grabs between Celtic, third with 6 points, and Porto set second on 7 points. The stage was set for Halloween night 2001. The All-Star Juventus squad arrived in Glasgow as strong favourites, and fielded a full strength 11 despite already having qualified. Elsewhere, Celtic needed Rosenberg to do them a favour in Portugal. Dale Piero gave Marcello Lippi's men the lead after 19 minutes, but useful Horn equalised for the home side just five minutes later. Right on the stroke of half-time, Chris Sutton scored to put Celtic ahead. Fan favourite Lubomir Moravchik had put the ball through Dale Piero's legs. Things were going well, 
But news came from Portugal that Porto went into the interval 1-0 ahead, so the Hoops needed a goal from Rosenberg and to hold on to their lead to have any chance of progressing. Just six minutes into the half, David Trezeguet equalised for the visitors, but Henrik Larsson slotted home a penalty on 57 minutes to restore a 3-2 lead for Celtic, before Chris Sutton doubled his tally on 64 minutes with an unforgettable volley to put Celtic 4-2 up. David Trezeguet scored once again on 77 minutes to make it a nervy ending, and the French international striker seemed to have completed his hat-trick in injury time to make it 4-4, but his goal was disallowed. A superb performance from Celtic gave them a win on the night, finishing with 9 points from 6 games, taking maximum from their home matches. But Porto held on to their 1-0 lead in Portugal to take second spot, meaning Celtic's elimination from the tournament. Despite coming so close to qualification, Celtic were out, but pride had been restored for Celtic on the European stage for the first time in a generation. Martin O'Neill's side would drop down to the UEFA Cup knockout competition to compete against La Liga outfit Valencia, losing 1-0 in Spain before winning 1-0 at Parkhead in the return leg, courtesy of another Henrik Larsson goal. The hoops fell short in the penalty shootout, but it was an enjoyable and memorable campaign nonetheless, and one which was a precursor for bigger things to come the following year.